What are you listening to at the moment? What's something that people think makes them look cool, but actually has the opposite effect? What things are unacceptable in bed? Gravy, bees, a forklift. I'm certified though, so I can I can bring the forklift, right? Horse head, any head according to my wife. Uh-oh. Bed bugs, definitely shoes. We don't even do shoes in the house. I can only imagine how awful it would be in bed. Sand, crackers, or cookies. Nature Valley granola bars. What's a sequel that is better than the original? Shook Ones Part 2. I have no idea what that is. Age of Empires 2. Star Trek 2. The Wrath of Khan. Song 2 Blur. Rescuers Down Under. That's one I can definitely vouch on. The Good the bad and the ugly. My wife. My wife. My wife is also way better than the prequel. I don't know what my writer was thinking putting me in that situation. Spider-Man 2. Raimi. That's actually really true. Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock. Way better than Spider-Man 1 with Green Goblin. And Spider-Man 2. Tom Holland. Spider-Man Far From Home. Eh. Not the same. Definitely not as good as Homecoming. Borderlands 2. Portal 2. As much as I enjoyed the original, Portal 2 plus its co-op mode puzzles was amazing. Love playing through it with my brother. Evil Dead 2. The Dark Knight 2008. That's also... A a very based opinion. I don't know how someone could disagree <laughs> with that opinion. I think we can all agree that Dark Knight was better than Batman Begins. What are you starting to like less and less the older you get? Malls. Used to love hanging out at the local mall with my friends as a teen, but as an adult, I, I fully just beeline straight to what I need to get, and then it's just survival mode until I get back to my car. My life and choices. Well, buddy, you gotta change that yourself. Getting up in the morning. I mean, I love the fact that I'm alive, but... <laughs> Getting up and out of bed? Socks. My knees. Leaving the house. Yeah, the past couple years, I definitely feel like I've kind of developed agoraphobia. Leaving the house is hard. <clears throat> and when I do leave the house, I don't leave my car. I'll drive. Working. I don't know. I never really liked it in the first place. Social media. It's vapid, boring, and a continuous stream of advertisements now. I remember when it used to be fun. Now I've deleted pretty much all forms of it except Reddit. Staying out late, like past 9 p.m. is late. Large crowds, waiting in lines, small talk, doing laundry. Driving at night. Real talk, slowly forgetting what it's like to be a kid. As I was growing up, I always told myself, I'll never forget how I operate and think right now, like all these adults around me who don't understand us. And here I am, not being able to remember what it was like to be a child. Sorry, past self. Could you lighten up a little? Driving. I loved cruising around. Now I'm really scared some rando is gonna kill me while texting or not checking their mirrors or making a video. What is a deal breaker when it comes to dating? The date being obsessed with themselves or continually talking about their ex-partners. Not brushing your teeth, poor dental hygiene on a regular basis. They don't initiate anything such as dates or intimacy. A fix me person. I will support you to be your best, but I am not responsible to fix you. Flat earther. Hey, the bar is down here. A bad temper. What the f*** are you talking about? Narcissism. Old body odor stank. Having to constantly message and call because they want to be a part of your life every second, even while working. Oh God. Me paying for everything all the time. What cover songs are better than the original? Santana's version of Black Magic Woman, originally by Fleetwood Mac. Feeling Alright by Joe Cocker. Jimi Hendrix, all along the watchtower is much better than Dylan's. Even Bob Dylan himself admitted that Jimmy's version was better. Ram Jam, Black Betty, Tainted Love by Soft Cell, House of the Rising Sun by The Animals. I just learned over in Today I Learned that nobody knows the origin of that song. Natalie Imbruglia's version of Torn, Somewhere Over the Rainbow by Israel Kamakawiwoole. I, I'm sure I butchered that. I'm very sorry. The Wiggles, Elephant, originally by Tame Impala. It does not have the right to be as funky and awesome as it does. I'm gonna have to give that a listen. Valerie sung by Amy Winehouse. So much so that everyone forgets the Zootons ever even tried. I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. I'm going to assume that I only had to scroll this far because she killed it so hard people forgot Dolly Parton ever sang it. Otherwise, I'd be offended. Hurt, Johnny Cash, covering Nine Inch Nails. Another one that didn't make it into this thread but I think is really great is the Taron Egerton cover of I'm Still Standing, originally by Elton John from the Sing movie. I think that is way better than the original. What is the most backhanded compliment you have ever received? You've gained some weight, but you wear it well. During a family counseling thing when I was in high school, School, the counselor asked my mom to say something, one single positive thing about me. She said he could be doing better in school. Piss me the f off. I don't care what anybody says. I like you. Wow, that's a really great picture of you. It doesn't look like you at all. Whew. Man, I'd feel like if I got told that. Oh my God. Was told I was the cutest little pregnant lady they'd ever seen and they loved watching my baby bump grow. I was not pregnant. My marketing related friend told me about a modeling opportunity that would be ideal for me. A quite average looking unthreatening man was used to represent a 
backpack vacuum. I accepted the job. Hey, get that bread, son. Don't let anyone else tell you. A guy at a sandwich shop said to me just yesterday, anyone ever tell you you look like the actor that was in and he trailed off trying to think of who I reminded him of? Naturally, in my head, I'm thinking Ben Affleck. <laughs> okay. And then he says, the guy from Mall Cop. Yep, Paul Blart. My wife and son thought it was pretty funny. Someone once said I look like an Indian Michael Sarah, and I never recovered from that. You're so pretty with a mask on. Whew. These are giving me whiplash, guys. Holy, you're not like other girls. You look so pretty when you aren't so depressed. Thanks? Which game has a mind-blowingly good soundtrack? Halo 3 ODST. Hotline Miami. Final Fantasy 7. Or basically anything that was scored by Nobuo Uematsu. Journey. Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2. Silent Hill 2. From Software Games. Witcher 3. And Doom. Tony Hawk 2, I think. Need for Speed Underground 2. GTA. Vice City. Donkey Kong Country 2. GTA. San Andreas. Plants vs. Zombies. It melts in your ears. Guys, I've never played Plants vs. Zombies ever. I'm 24. I think I missed out on it. I might have been too busy playing Angry Birds. Did they even come out at the same time? I don't know. The Legend of Zelda. Each and every one of them. Minecraft music has such a unique vibe. Cuphead. What movie was better than the book? Forrest Gump. Practical magic. I love the movie with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. I watch it every Halloween, but I read the book recently and it was not good. The movie is much better. Arrival 2017. The short story is fine, but the movie deprives you of one piece of information that only gets out in the end, making it one of my favorite movie twists ever. To the people who saw the movie, the nerd writer on YouTube made an amazing video on this. To the people who haven't, watch it. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Not a book, but Pirates of the Caribbean movie was better than the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. How do you compare the two there? What? You're comparing a two hour movie versus a 15 minute if that ride at Disney World? How is that fair? <laughs> it's not fair. It's not. Oh my God. The Godfather. The Prestige. Night at the Museum. It was adapted from a very simplistic children's book that narrated a museum security guard's job. Guys, Night at the Museum was predecessor to FNAF, I think. Because you're a security guard and then the things you're watching come to life at night and some of them try to get you. Hmm. Hmm. The Silence of the Lambs, 1991. I think Shawshank Redemption. It pretty much had to be. Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption was a pretty short story, so a lot had to be added to even have enough content for a movie. That being said, I completely agree with you. Devil Wears Prada. Gone with the Wind. What? I love the book and absolutely hate the movie. American Psycho. Another movie that I just have not seen. <laughs> what are you starting to miss more and more the older you get? How carefree and innocent childhood was. Quality of sleep. I miss being able to eat whatever I want without acid reflux. Good friends. The idea that you can still do anything. My joints. Ah, old people moment. New experiences in general. The way my hometown was before a major population boom. The hope to be something important in some way. Life before cell phones and social media. Whatever. Whatever. Social media was the greatest thing to ever happen to me. I met so many of my wonderful friends through social media I would have never met ever without them. So, I like cell phones, I like social media, and I'm very thankful for them. Getting up early on a Saturday morning to watch cartoons with jam on toast and a cup of tea. What are you, British? <clears throat> Disgusting. That being said, Saturday morning cartoons, banger. The time when I didn't have back pain. How quickly the body recovered. Aches would only last a day and cuts would disappear like magic. My son being a little kid. What insult has someone called you that you kinda agree with? You resemble Rapunzel in a certain way, but instead of letting down your hair, you let everyone in your life down. Damn. Oh my god. That's so rude. What the frick? <laughs> Someone called me an asshole who thought he was better than him. I did in fact think I was better than him. I was told I should be a lawyer because I'm so full of bull <laughs> Well, did you become a lawyer? Lazy. Same. I got over my laziness to make this comment. Hey, good for you, man. I'm a 20-year-old girl, but I look like I'm 15. I've been told I look either like a prepubescent boy or a 42-year-old lesbian. TBH? I can see it. Procrastinator. I'm the worst, and I know it. Same. I'll explain why later. I've been called the king of procrastination. Mainly be- A girl called me a prude. Man booby. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> what do you think we'll see artificial intelligence systems doing within 10 years? Still changing well to wheel on our phones. Well, we'll have to see about that. You know how you can type a prompt and an AI can turn it into an image? We'll have the same thing for music, for writing, and for code. And further in the future, it will extend to movies and video games. Also, proper self-driving cars. Whether they will be available and legal is a different thing. On the science side, who's to say? Even now, there are AIs that can do crazy things. Hopefully, the difference in 10 years will be that scientists will actually use them, which should accelerate progress a bit. Definitely something ad-related or spam, gonna be exclusively used either in war or to sell you something. Maybe not 10 years, but I really, really believe that in the near future, AI, friends, and love interests will be a thing. It'll be like Overwatch with the Omnics. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> I think AI will be generating code for programs. Not full code, but major sections which can be generated as a skeleton by directing the system what you ultimately want to do. We'll make coding more accessible. People will fall 
in love with it. I hope not. <laughs> Tracking how and where you spend your money. Keep social scores. Keep everyone monitored at all times. What people think is a good thing now will become their nightmare. It is already happening, but I think it will intensify a thousand times more. And everyone will accept it because of safety. People will be enslaved to AI. It probably will get less interested in people and more interested in its own growth. Might even try to leave Earth to get away from heating and weathering issues. Murdering humans that don't meet its standard. We're not within 200 years of that. Modern AI isn't AI, it's just a capitalist buzzword. What music defines the 90s for you? Sublime. 90s had so many popular genres, I don't think it could be defined by just one. <laughs> Jump around, House of Pain. You had people from all walks of life, different races, different ages, and different tastes in music all vibing to it. Boys to men and subsequent boy bands. Counting crows. Grunge, I guess. I was a child in the 90s, so for me, it's those silly songs you don't really see being made anymore. Like Barbie Girl and the Macarena. The Macarena, you mean that song from Fortnite? Sugar Ray and Third Eye Blind. What's something that is supposed to be fun, but you find absolutely miserable? Family events and social outings. Having overnight guests. We have one right now. It's someone I really like, my partner's friend. But if I'm honest with myself, there's no moment where I am not low-key uncomfortable, even if it's my own family. Dating. Weddings. Socializing at work. I choose my friends. I want to spend time with them, not my coworkers. I hate that I have a nine-hour job because I'm required to have a one-hour lunch break. Can I please just scarf down a sandwich on my 10-minute break and get home to my wife and friends? Amusement parks. Singing happy birthday. I feel like when people sing happy birthday, nobody has fun. Because I sure don't like singing it. And I sure also don't like it getting sung to me. When everyone's singing happy birthday to you, you're just standing there and don't know what to do. Exactly this, as I was just saying. Oh my gosh. Parties. Going to the mall. Robin, is that you? No, sorry, wrong channel. Robin's on the regular MK channel, not this one. Long past it now, but high school. None of that was fun. All pre-planned, work-related, social events, and anything involving the in-laws. What do you wish fell from the sky instead of rain? Money. <laughs> Money. Changing rain out for pretty much anything else would probably make the planet uninhabitable for humans. Chocolate milk for sure. My god. The smell of the planet after a week. Oh, I'd throw up. Anything else would be bad. Healing water. You're sick? Go dance in the rain. Plants are dying? Take them out to drown in healing water. Your grandpa or grandma died? I don't know what it would do, honestly. You look old? Go to healing rain and it might make you look younger. I don't know. But anything else than water would damn the earth, making it dry and all plant life would die and dry up. Beer? But only Fridays through Sundays. What a sticky situation. Happiness. Amen, brother. We could all use a little more of that right now. Clearer water? My granddad always talked about how he used to gather rainwater for use. Not now. Even well water needs a lot of filtering to be usable. Tiny flower petals. People with pollen allergies have left the chat. Notes from the future. It would be entertaining as f imagining just walking while it's raining notes and out of nowhere you just get a note that says Brian get your shit together. You from the future. And you're not Brian. Men. Hallelujah it's raining man. Cats and dogs. Look I think we already have enough stray dogs and cats out. I don't think it raining more is gonna help at all. Grand pianos. As long as it doesn't hit my house sure. What's the stereotype in which you perfectly fit? Um the fat medium ugly friend that is very funny is me. Probably more than I'd like to admit. I'm a web developer and I'm on Reddit. A lot. I suppose that is one I can live with. The I don't fit any stereotype stereotype. I'm black and I have a raggedy afro and that means I like anime, which I do. Basic white bitch all the way. Pumpkin spice, Bravo TV, astrology, Instagram pics, everything. Guys, I heard Mercury's in Gatorade today. I'm sure you haven't heard that joke for. A Canadian mostly. I love poutine and maple syrup. I say a and sorry a lot, but frankly I don't really care much about hockey. Tattooed pretty white girl who is obsessed with fall and thinks she's more intimidating than she is. The main character of Office Space. I'm currently living the rut of office life. I love mayonnaise. What? I put raisins in my potato salad. Gay raisins? I'm just really white. Literally, I'm a secondary character that people like for some reason. I really don't know what to make out of it, but it's neat. I have big feet and a huge penis. I'm pretty sure this is a genuine biological correlation. The Florida redneck, the future frat boy, and the jock. Fat American white person who can't stand super spicy foods. That's where we differ, my friend. I love spicy food. What's your favorite Disney movie? I would like everyone to take a second before you go down and read the rest of this video to go to the comments sections and put in your favorite Disney movie of all time. We're not talking Marvel or Star Wars. We're talking straight Disney. I'll go first. Mine is Moana. And we continue. Beauty and the Beast. Mulan. 1998. Lion King. The animated one. Well, they are both technically animated. Just one is a 2D cartoon.
cartoon, and one is a 3D hyper-realistic film. The good one, then. Bolt. Really? Okay. A goofy movie. The Jungle Book. My favorite Disney character is Mowgli. Moana. Hey. Based. Pinocchio. And not the live-action remake. Either Aladdin or Little Mermaid, mainly because of Ursula. She was such a great antagonist. Up. Alice in Wonderland. Wreck-It Ralph. What's your favorite film soundtrack? And why? Surf's Up. Requiem for a Dream. Clint Mansell is amazing. It's such a powerful movie. And if you've seen it, you can listen to the soundtrack and it will take you through all the emotions of the entire film without having to see a scene. Pirates. Yep, Hans Zimmer does not disappoint. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Nice. Ah, nice. Lord of the Rings. Shrek 2. It has the perfect opening song as well as one of the best musical numbers I've seen at the climax. A Whole New World, Aladdin. That's a song, not a soundtrack, but okay. Who doesn't want a riding magic carpet flying through the clouds? How to Train Your Dragon. There's just something about Test Drive that makes me tear up every time I hear it. The first that popped in my head is Back to the Future. It's just so iconic. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, or Tron Legacy. While listening to either, it feels like I'm watching the movie. Stranger Things. I don't know why, I just like it. Hey, nothing wrong with like an 80s synth pop. Nothing wrong with that. Tarzan. Phil Collins absolutely did not have to go that hard for a movie about a boy being adopted by gorillas, but he did, and it was amazing. God, Phil Collins is so based. Like, seriously, such a good guy. Did that for us. For real, for real. What's something that people think makes them look cool, but actually has the opposite effect? Being rude to people for no reason and ridiculing them just to look cool is so unattractive and such a red flag. Revving one's engine loudly. Back in the early 2000s, I had a buddy that would wear band-aids on his face before we went out to clubs and bars. The rapper Nelly used to do this, and apparently my buddy was trying to emulate this. Lamau. Cringy then and cringy now. Wearing sunglasses on the back of your head. Ew. Lip fillers. Leaving your mouth slightly open at all times. They think it makes you look sexy, but they just look brain dead. Blasting ACDC Greatest Hits Volume 4 through your itsy bitsy teeny screamy motorcycle speakers. Cigarettes. The duck face pose. What is this? 2012? Who still does the duck face pose? Calm down. Twerking. Hey, 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 come, come on. Well, come on, come on. Chill. Wearing sunglasses indoors because you just look like a tool. Cursing like a sailor. What are you listening to at the moment? Let me see. I am listening to the DND podcast, Just Roll With It. I'm on the most recent episode, All Hands on Deck, Just Roll With It, number 83. I love those boys. Shout out. Possum Kingdom by the Toadies. Gang of Four's first album, Entertainment. The Arctic Monkeys. Thank you, Reddit user I Coffee. Disgusting. The neighbor's yard getting mowed. Sounds like I have three landscapers in my office currently. Rapture. Blondie. The sound of the washing machine. I can be nice and, like, uh, soothing sometimes, but depends on the load you have. Wife yelling. I've got all their albums. Elton John. Hard to beat. Truly one of the old greats like Dolly and Ozzy. Metallica. Master of puppets. Cole Coal World. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Who's the worst comedian that became famous? Andy Dick. I feel like Andy Dick was the kid who everyone thought was weird, so he started doing things for shock value and he finally got some attention, so he kept doing it. The entire premise of this humor is that you don't know what's real and what's a show, and now it's his entire personality and can't even stop himself. James Corden, definitely not a comedian. It's true and you should say it. Prepare for the arrival of 9,000 Amy Schumers. Any Schumer. Ah, f Reddit's hatred of Amy Schumer. I wanted a bunch of downvotes today anyway. She has great bits, like helping her mom with computer problems or the whole 12 Angry Men parody she did. Worst comedian? Median? Worse than Mencia or the racist puppet guy? Check yourself, Reddit. She might not be as bad as Jeff Dunham or Carlos Mencia, but she is a huge plagiarist and still hasn't changed. So like, mm. Jeff Dunham. When I was younger, I kind of liked Jeff Dunham, but now thinking back, I think it was mostly just, oh, puppet said the F word. Ha ha ha. Steve Harvey. How that man is famous is absolutely beyond me. Potentially hot take here. I really hate Steve Harvey, and I think he's really going for like a new Cosby thing. Hopefully without the drugs. It's a tie between Carlos Mencia and Dane Cook. Nah, Dane Cook is bad, but not Carlos Mencia level of bad. Rebel Wilson. All of her humor is either crass body slash poop humor or just being mean and terrible. She's also incredibly rude to her crew and an absolute terror on set. I know I'm gonna get downvoted into oblivion. I scrolled through hella comments and couldn't find a single mention, but Kevin Hart is so unfunny, but he's one of the most famous comedians for no reason. He's little man slash loudmouth shtick got old quick. I don't think I've ever heard any of Kevin Hart's stand up, but he is good in movies, so I don't know. What's something that happened in your country that would scare Americans? I don't know any Americans really, but people seem concerned when I mention that we occasionally have baboons invading our houses and full on social media groups dedicated to alerting people so we can lock up and bring animals inside before it happens. Granted, you have to live in an area where there is a troop of baboons for this to happen, but still. Still, edit, I'm 
sure this isn't unusual in rural American areas, though with other animals, but still. Also, load shedding. Load shedding? I, I've never heard of that. Load shedding. In South Africa, we can have up to 14 hours a day without power. They are planned outages. This is due to the corruption and lack of maintenance to the infrastructure. We even have an app to let us know when to expect our electricity to be stolen. Oh, well, like instant gratification. Now I know. Kenya, lions frequent the villages at night. Hyenas actually take small kids way at night. That's kind of horrifying. Spiders the size of your palm just casually chilling on the wall every summer. I normally just let them be. They are active at night and will get about your house. They move surprisingly fast for their size also and suddenly vanish. They also get in your car and shoes. Hmm, sounds like that only happens in a made up country. Public execution. Not in the whole country, just in my neighborhood for some reason. Oh, that's, that's cool. Great. Babies, sometimes smaller children, sleeping outside in their buggy by themselves year round. Babies seem to sleep real well on the balcony when it's negative 10 C and snowing. I don't know where you are, but don't do that. In my country, Uganda, the army kidnaps people and it has become so normal. The cars they use were nicknamed drones because if it kidnaps you, it disappears at lightning speed. They are always numberless, so intrackable. They do this in broad daylight and when they arrest someone like that, you are sure that even if you go to any police precinct or army barracks, they won't have him because officially you are not arrested anywhere. That's kind of terrifying. Sitting in a hot room naked with strangers and your buddies. Sauna. Finland. Berkele. Today, I casually remarked to an American that a huntsman spider the size of a dinner plate once made its way into my house and that this wouldn't be completely out of the ordinary where I'm from. He seemed pretty horrified at that and was more horrified still when I remarked that I kept the huntsman spider around and named him Robert because he could eat the more poisonous spiders that might cause skin necrosis if they bite you. Anyway, yeah, come to Australia. It's fun. This must be some kind of inside joke because people keep saying come to Australia, but if you look at a map, it's not there. Who was praised as a good person in human history, but was actually evil? Charles Dickens dumped his wife of 10 kids in 22 years for an 18-year-old mistress. When she called him out on it, he publicly called her a fat idiot. Pablo Picasso. He was a complete jerk and his kids were terrified of him. He would beat his girlfriends and draw them while they cried. Q Reddit going off on Mother Teresa. Is she bad? I don't know enough about her. Thomas Edison. He killed Topsy. They say, aw, Topsy, at my autopsy. But no one will be more shocked than me. Edison was a douche. I'm pretty sure he stole the idea for the light bulb from some guy in England, but I mean, <laughs> that's just what Americans do. Chaplin. Was he a bad guy? I haven't heard much about him. And I haven't heard much from him either. Get, get it? Because he was in silent film. So, okay. You can double anything. What do you choose? My chances of winning anything. I am then going to Vegas and betting on red. Sure, there is a possibility of losing money on zero, but 97% chance of winning is basically an ability to print money. Any deposit made to my bank account. Then all you have to do is withdraw and deposit like 10 times and you rich. My IQ. I don't even think IQ means anything. It's like an antiquated system. Like I probably have like a four, but here I am. My odds of being successful on anything I attempt. Imagine my success on Tinder as a 13 foot male. If my math is correct, you're already six and a half feet tall. So you should be having good success already. A second penis, just because. Where would you put it though? On his forehead, my dog's lifespan. You know, I didn't think about that one, but yeah, I'm gonna choose that one too. Amount of chips in a bag of Lay's. I mean, almost, but if you double it, you're just getting two chips in the bag, so it's not much more. What anime is a must watch anime? I'm gonna say it before anybody else, but Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is so good. Oh my God. Mushishi, the most beautiful anime I've ever seen. Soundtrack is out of this world too. I've only seen a few episodes, but God, it was really pretty. Akira and Ghost in the Shell, both great choices. Though Ghost in the Shell I'm a little lost on since they have a lot of different versions. If you feel like being depressed, watch Grave of the Fireflies. Still haven't seen that one because I don't want to be more sad than I already am. Studio Ghibli movies, Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, and Spirited Away. Many more great ones. Personally, my favorite is probably Kiki's Delivery Service. It's just so, I don't know, it's, it's adorable. I'd recommend the Ghost in the Shell anime from 2005. Great story, great animation. Berserk, 1997. Still need to get to that one, but it's so hard to find it. Parasite. I did watch this one in the last year, and it is pretty solid, albeit kind of short. I just watched one episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, then I binged the entire first season in one sitting. Highly recommend. Wholeheartedly agree. Jujutsu Kaisen is one of the more 
interesting shonen anime, the hand-to-hand combat animation is oh, oh, mwah. For non-anime fans, they definitely should watch Your Name. Beautiful movie. Oh my god. And same with Weathering With You. One Punch Man. I think it's a nice entry into how goofy anime can be. The world ends. What song would play in its end credits? Always look on the bright side of life. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine by R.E.M. Or The End by The Doors. What a wonderful world. I see trees on fire. <laughs> Molten magma too. We'll meet again. Seems appropriate if the world is ending from war. My Way by Frank Sinatra. Eh, I don't know. It wouldn't be applicable to everyone on Earth. Never gonna give you up. I'm actually okay with this one. Closing time. Obviously. Scratch that. That's actually the best choice. Highway to hell. Stairway to heaven. Eh, it depends on where you're going, I guess. What is the worst thing about being left handed. Fountain pens and pencils. F***ing hate smudges. The smudging is annoying. The right-handed desks suck. But it's scissors, man. F***ing scissors. All the cute designs on mugs are only visible for right-handed people. That's why I don't even use the handle on a mug, partially because I'm stupid and because I like to show off what's on it. Measuring cup labels are on the other side when I use my left hand. When someone tries to teach you how to play guitar, line up a pool cue, shoot a bow and arrow, aim a gun, etc., and they can't because you're you're left-handed. My granddad was left-handed. He went to a Catholic school. This was in the 1930s slash early 1940s UK. And the nuns would tie his left hand behind him and hit him until he wrote with his right hand. They said it was a sign of the devil if someone was left-handed. So cruel. I think that's just a sign of the times that people don't like other people to be different. And that's still true today, unfortunately. When you write, you have to put your whole arm on the paper because you are actively pushing it. Whereas right-handed people just have to apply a little force not to pull the paper. I despise spiral notebooks and writing in binders. Also, getting my hand covered in pencil lead when writing or drawing. Thankfully, I'm not fully left-handed, just with writing and eating mostly, but most things I can use either hand. Hearing the following words. Oh, you're left-handed? It becomes grating after the thousandth time of hearing it. Or the, are you left-handed? As they watch you write with your left hand. Some people just have very poor observational skills. Statistically, we are going to die not nine years earlier than our right-handed counterparts. Is that true? Was there a study done? Because that's weird. What's something that's clearly overpriced, but people still buy it? Rolex watches when buying from a non-authorized dealer. Rolex watches from authorized dealers too. Pretty much anything having to do with the wedding industry is exorbitantly expensive. I couldn't believe the prices when quoting for the venue, cake, photographer, the church, dresses and tuxedos, the rings, the fucking props, etc. Fucking absurd that people are willing to go into massive debt for a wedding. Just throw a little shindig at your house. Have a fun party with your close friends and maybe not your family. Most subscription services. Most services shouldn't really be subscriptions in the first place. Looking at you, Adobe. I miss the days when you could just buy a forever license to a product and then you just have it. Everything to do with playing golf. And people think they're so cool for playing golf. It's like, wow, yeah, you're a private club member? That's cool. How much money do you have? Starbucks. Oh my god, I just realized I haven't gone to Starbucks in like a good year and a half maybe? Probably because they did get very expensive. Apple products sent from my iPhone. Still the biggest scam is Apple purposefully breaking their old phones when they release a new one. Because, you know, money. Death expenses. That's precisely why when I die, just throw me in a ditch or throw me in a bonfire. It saves so much money and like saves up land space. Tickets to Disneyland, including all the hotel and food fees. Well, I hope you're ready to go in debt for six years because kids, we're going to Disneyland. New college textbooks. The biggest scam to that is you don't even get a brand new textbook. You get a used one, but you still have to pay like $150 for it that you'll only use for that semester. Diamonds. Oh, you mean rock poop? Cool. Which word has the best mouthfeel? Ricochet or ricochet? Rendezvous. I don't know how to spell it, but I love saying it. I don't know how to spell it. Proceeds to spell it right. Regardless, that is the stupidest way to spell that word. Colloquialism. I just swallowed my uvula trying. Fuck. Mechanical keyboard nerds be like Mike Tyson before putting on shoes. Yeah, where my thoughts at? Fully. <laughs>
<laughs> mouth feel nice crisp it starts in the back of your mouth and rolls to the front crisp mufasa 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 that's kind of a tongue twister actually so maybe not right when you go out you need four things keys wallet phone what's the fourth item chapstick never know when you'll need it do be careful if it's too hot out because you don't want that melting in your pocket emotional support water bottle headphones plus one i can't raw dog the world i need headphones as a barrier to the bs glasses y yeah i guess i suppose sunglasses or regular i always remember it by this handy mnemonic wowie wallet phone wikis egg egg backup well duh of course you don't want to forget your egg i always thought it was spectacles testicles wallet and watch that's how you remember to bless yourself slash cross yourself up spectacles down testicles right wallet and left watch pants that is a good one do not forget those when you leave the house what movie should be left alone and not remade schindler's list yeah i think we got it down back to the future none of them i can't even imagine somebody wanting to recreate back to the future like you can't capture lightning in a bottle like that or lightning on a clock tower the emperor's new groove that would throw off the groove shawshank redemption yeah again i can't think of any way to remake that to make it better it's already good enough the matrix it's perfectly set in the era it was originally wrote in it really was a miss on the new one like i thought it was fun but it just didn't have the same feeling lord of the rings trilogy haven't watched the show yet so i don't care about that just please never try to remake the movies if they tried to remake it they would make everything cgi and it would just it, what's the point what are some free online tools everyone should know of the noun project.com has a ton of free icons extremely useful for many projects nine night when you set up a new computer that one is super useful because it basically just compiles everything you would want to download like discord spotify google chrome anything that you want you can select it out of a list and it kind of just puts it all into an exe that'll install them all for you if you have a library card libby is an app that lets you borrow ebooks and audiobooks from your library to your tablet slash phone there's a borrow queue but very good if you don't mind the wait likewise you can use the library card to stream movies on canopy they have an amazing selection 10 minutemail.com it creates an email account that you can plug into websites you intend on only using once and don't want your address on spam lists and it doesn't work anymore do not fear because i use one called tempmail.org and it is so useful and it's still working photo p best photoshop clone i've used used to use pixlr back in the day but photo p is nearly identical lucid chart and grammarly grammarly has a premium function but the free version is already very helpful grammarly's free service is useless now and has been for several years since they gimped it tinywow.com helps you with a lot of image audio video pdf conversions for free remove.bg for removing photo backgrounds pixlr.com for quick edits if you don't have paint save from.net downloading movies from youtube twitter reddit etc a website i learned from reddit actually find a grave i found my grandparents grave there complete with a picture they're buried in a very small cemetery in a small scottish village slash town i was shocked to see someone had cataloged it there which celebrity's death were you actually sad about robin williams genie i'm going to miss you you too al that scene has a whole new meaning following his passing as memorable as the role was i hesitate to really relate aladdin to robin williams since he really didn't like aladdin after disney breached contract and used his voice for advertisement alan rickman it really felt like he was coming into the age where he could have played so many crotchety old men parts so so well steve Irwin. i still cry about this one i love that entire family heath ledger Ugh. i just rewatched brokeback and he was such a good actor sobbed like a baby chadwick boseman truthfully gone way too soon betty white it was a tragedy but she was pretty up there so i mean it was kind of her time but she was still kicking it leonard nimoy dude was 50 percent of my childhood amy winehouse she was so phenomenally talented and i think a lot of people thought she would get better david bowie i'm still not over it mac miller there are so many celebrities that go before their time and it's really upsetting kobe i'll never get over how tmz broke the story before it was even broken to his family prince philip seymour hoffman taylor hawkins bob ross at least his legacy still lives on what's the most common thing people lie about how are you i'm good every time it's a lie nobody's just good most people lie about their true emotions their height or weight i'm eight foot and two kilograms look 
looks like we got a skinny queen over here. I have read the terms and conditions. There are a very select amount of people that can actually say they have read the terms and conditions, but I am not one of them. Their mental health. I do hope we break the stigma at some point because people need to talk about it. Like, you can't suffer alone. Lies to protect others' feelings. Eh, that one's a slippery slope because then you could argue that you're saying mean things as being honest when you're just being mean. Money. I think that's a weird work thing where they said don't tell people about your wages even though you should. You should discuss your wages with your fellow employees. How long will it take for them to get ready? For me, it's about five minutes. Sure, 30 minutes might go by, but it was still five minutes to get ready. What's the best advice you've ever received from your dad? Always use the right tool for the job. Sometimes the right tool is a phone book, meaning that some jobs are over your head and you need to call in an expert. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A father that admits that he can't do everything? Never heard of him. Hobbies are good, but you can't eat plastic models. Observe people. Copy the good things you see in people and learn from their mistakes. Such simple advice, but I really took it to heart. Never tell your boss you're bored. That's basically just asking them to give you work. It's called gambling, not winning for a reason. Holy <laughs> It just occurred to me my dad has never given me any advice. I'm being serious. I can't think of a single thing. He once told me in a sort of compliment, you just did whatever you were going to do. I never had a say in it. I left home at 16 though. He was pretty strict about the golden rule. I guess that's advice kinda. If you can't be good, be careful. I like that. That's That seems pretty useful. You can trust your friends with your life, but not your money or your wife. Well, it's a good thing I'll never have a wife. You can figure that one out. Don't have kids. Kids. Bit of a harsh thing for a dad to say to his kid, but he's not really wrong. Measure twice, cut once. Always spend 15 years looking for milk. Well, I mean, you would gotta be sure you're getting the right kind of milk. Work to live. Don't live to work. It'll never not be funny to me when somebody brags about exploiting themselves for a workplace that does not care about them. What's one place you've traveled that you never want to go back to? I've been to Florida a couple times, and I'm good. You can say, oh, but they have Disney. Disney World, and I'm like, oh, I don't have thousands of dollars. I've read various threads like this, and one thing I've learned is that Egypt probably isn't the best place for women. Egypt. It's dirty, dangerous, and the people are not nice at all. My teenage sister had to endure harassment from older men wherever she went. Iraq wasn't that great, but it may have been the circumstances of the visit. Oh, you were in the military, huh? How's that oil? Birmingham. You see, I'm having trouble figuring out if this is in the UK or in Alabama. Either one, probably stay away. Dubai. It seems like a really cool place, but I don't know if I have enough money to ever go there. Morocco. Not gonna explain. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Russia. Yeah, right now seems like a bad time. San Fran was a huge disappointment last year. I used to live near there in the 80s and 90s, but now it's a total <laughs> hole. Our car was broken into. I won't be going back anytime soon. Well, as a previous Bay Area resident, uh, why would you drive in San Francisco? Texas, if I can help it. Well, I'll my exes live there, so no, I'm not going there. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I've never been in a relationship. Paris. After 20 years, I still remember the piss and <laughs> smell on the streets. 2020. Thank God time travel isn't real. Your task to ruin the Harry Potter series in the least expected way possible. You can choose any point in the series to change. What do you do? Harry hits the brick wall at platform nine and three quarters, breaks his nose, which gets pushed into his brain, causing instant death. Well, that would be a very short book. Harry Potter is actually actually wizard poor and can't afford any of the required items for school. He does not get admitted and is forced to return under the stairs. Now somehow worse as he knows of the magic world he can't be a part of. I opt to add an accurate portrayal of the abuse, drugs, and sex found in any other British boarding school in the early 90s. Go for the R rating. I don't think that would ruin it. That would be kind of cool. Harry's adoptive family loves and adores him. After a semester at Hogwarts, Harry decides that he doesn't want to become a wizard and instead embark on a lifelong career as a mundane office worker. Harry sat in a different carriage on his first trip to Hogwarts and made friends with people who weren't Ron and Hermione. Without those two, Harry wouldn't have been able to get through the challenges to get to the Philosopher's Stone. I'd like to imagine in that world, like, his friends are just like, no, I don't want to go to the restricted section. Are you crazy? Ugh, go to sleep. First movie, Harry falls down one of the moving staircases of Hogwarts, breaks his neck, and dies instantly. Roll credits. Yeah, that was a huge OSHA violation. I'd say. Harry and friends form a band, and every chapter sees them break out into song for one reason or another. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're gonna say
say you want a Harry Potter musical? That's actually a really good idea. Somebody should do that. Hmm. It was all an imagination of a boy bullied by his aunt and uncle to escape reality. At the end of the books, it fades out and he's been in a mental hospital the whole time. Encourage J.K. Rowling to keep using Twitter. Yep, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. Harry is not actually the chosen one and not a horcrux. That's Neville. But nobody knows. Harry sacrifices himself for nothing. Voldemort wins. Replace Daniel Radcliffe with Danny DeVito and have most of his magic spells expose breasts accidentally. Yeah, just instead of Harry, just make it Frank Reynolds. What's the dumbest conspiracy theory that people believe? I'd have to say Flat Earth because, like, come on, y'all. Like, we, we're, we're in 2022. Flat Earth. Yeah, see? Exactly. Trickle-down economics. If you're an American, you can actually trace back most of our problems to Reagan. Ohio being real. People keep talking about that place, but I haven't seen it on a map. Birds being fake. Do people really think that, or is it just a joke? I don't know if people think birds are fake, but they do think birds are working for the FBI. Flat Earth or QAnon? Edit, definitely QAnon. I think QAnon was originally just a weird ARG somebody wanted to make on 4chan, but somehow old people understood it. Aliens built the pyramids. Is it so hard to believe that we forced people to build them? The Mandela Effect. It's one of the dumbest things ever. People just forget parts about something that they had seen years ago and act surprised as if it had changed. Eh, I don't know. I don't think it's that dumb. I mean, because everybody loves Star Wars, but so many people get the Vader line wrong. He doesn't even say, Luke, I am your father. Nobody said 9-11. As stupid as it may be, yeah, I kind of fall into that one. That the moon landing was faked. There could be a chance that we did fake it just so we could say we beat the Russians, but at this point in time, you should know that we've gotten there multiple times. That people are capable of maintaining a shadow government. History shows that nothing ever maintains itself. As tight-knit as secret services can be, there will always be one whistleblower that will let everybody know what's going on. The Avril Lavigne and Melissa one. On that same topic, I guess the Paul McCartney theory as well. Pizzagate. Do you honestly believe there was a whole dungeon under a pizza hut? There are Martians on the moon. Why the hell would there be Martians on the moon? They would be on Mars, duh. Lady Gaga has a dick. Was that a conspiracy theory? I thought that was just something people said to be mean. That we live in the year 2022. Yeah, people that subscribe to that are just so ridiculous. I mean, we've all been in a coma since 2016, so uh, just wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. What do you have exactly three of? Testicles. As in balls? I have exactly three dollars in my wallet. I never pay with cash, so they've been there a long time. Daughters. Sounds like we got a baby making machine over here. <laughs> Whoa. Thumbs for the first five days of my life. I now have exactly two. Seashells in the bathroom. Legs. This guy, tripods. Okay, but are you actually talking about legs or is it just a weird <laughs> joke? F***s to give. Ooh, you're running low there, buddy. Brain cells. Yeah, and unfortunately I share them with a majority of my friends, so <laughs> it's not good. Starting tomorrow, three ferrets. I'm so excited. I'm excited for you. Those little guys are just, they're just little noodles of fun. Emotions I show to other people. I kind of feel that. The only emotions I show are anger, annoyance, and sometimes happiness. What is legal and should become illegal? Not being able to unsubscribe to something using the same method you used to subscribe. Increasing the volume on commercials by 20 goddamn decibels. Hiding ingredients in food by calling it natural flavors. That one's a little sus to me. Overselling a plane and putting people who bought tickets on standby. Siren sounds on the radio. Yeah, police sirens, car crash noises, ambulances, fire trucks, all of it, scum. But who listens to the radio anymore? Free trials that auto charge when they run out. I was a victim of this recently with some skincare stuff. I was very bummed because they charged me like $60. Contracts signed by parents on behalf of their child still be enforceable once the child comes of age. Taylor Swift and Lily Allen are the big famous examples of this, but it happens to loads more who don't get big enough to get the media attention. They did not sign the contract. Forcing an adult to live by the rules in the contract they did not agree should be classed as a form of slavery. Unnecessarily bright dipped headlights. Oh, this is my pet peeve. I drive to work and from work every day in the dark, most of the time on my way home, and these headlights are ridiculous. It's like I gotta, I'd, I'd rather just close my eyes when I'm driving than have to experience that flashing light. It's ridiculous. Catching wild animals and selling them as pets. Hermit crabs, parrots, and many fish still fall in this category and are going extinct because of it. People who don't want to work, why? If I could do a job that was much less stressful, simple, and enjoyable,
enjoyable, I would, but to just survive this world, you gotta make a lot more than minimum wage. I don't work in a field I care about, and the field I care about doesn't pay well enough. Workplace politics are annoying, and I don't like potlucks. It's not that I don't want to work, I want to work less. Like, max 30, 32 hours and be compensated well enough where I can put my bills on auto pay. Work isn't the issue, it's how much we have to work to live, and I make well above minimum wage, but it's still a struggle to make ends meet. Just dealing with people in general, I find f***ing exhausting. There is nothing that I love enough to want to spend 40 plus hours a week doing it. People love to be useful and productive if they have autonomy and are in control of their own time. The modern workforce is so unnatural that it strips away much of what makes working fun. People aren't built to be robots, but workplaces often expect that you will behave like one. Where's the fun in that? Mind you, I do enjoy my job, but decades of spending 40 plus hours on something is enough to make anything feel unenjoyable. I want to work in my garden, on my home, with my family, on crafts, but I don't want to work. I think most people want to be valid and useful members of their societies. What they don't want is to be ground down to nothing for nothing their whole life. People aren't the problem. I don't want to work. I want to read. I want to watch the TV shows and movies I enjoy. I want to ride my bike. I want to be able to cook meals and try new recipes. I want to go visit friends who don't live within walking distance. I want to play video games. I want to provide my pets with food and health care they need. I want to be able to take care of myself and get the health care I need. I want to build things and tinker with cars and build fish ponds. Unfortunately, all of those things take money. And since I was neither lucky enough to be born with the silver spoon up my or won the lottery, I have to work to do them. I want to work, but only want to work to be a small part of a very colorful and varied life. Instead, it's required to work 40 to 60 hours a week just to make ends meet, and at the end of it, have no energy left to enjoy what little time you have outside of work. I want to work, but the primary caveat is that I want to work on something meaningful. The majority of jobs aren't doing much for society and are a waste of time, because why would I want to spend almost all of my time doing something which stresses me out and means I can't stay in bed when I want to? So many people say, oh, just get a job you love. But there literally isn't a job I want. Does anyone really want to work? We do it because we have to. Realest thread I've ever seen. Holy moly. What's the creepiest thing you've ever witnessed? My house is on the side of a highway and I have windows facing the highway. It was late at night. I couldn't sleep. So I decided to tire myself out by jump roping. Halfway through my session, I took a glance outside and I saw a man standing on the closest side of the highway staring at me under the lamppost. It felt as if it was something out of a horror movie. Once I I saw his creepy silhouette, I immediately just ducked to the ground, and when I looked up, he was gone. To me now, it's a funny situation, as he probably was just some homeless man, confused as to why someone was jump roping at like 12 a.m., and when I fell down, he probably bolted. Driving on the interstate late at night. Road was decently foggy, so visibility was somewhat reduced. In this distance, there was a light waving back and forth through the fog in the middle of the road, slowly getting more pronounced as I got closer. I got close enough to see that it was a guy waving his phone flashlight to alert oncoming traffic. Right in the area past him was two cars that had just crashed, and bodies all over the road. No first responders there yet or anything, just carnage and a man flashing a light. That is creepy as hell, oh my god. When I was younger, 11 or 12, I moved into a new house. My room had a big closet and access to the attic. I was a scared little kid and was worried a monster lived up there. One night I woke up in the middle of the night to see my closet door slowly opening. I didn't move and then yelled for my parents. Found out if the door isn't properly closed, it will open itself. Still have never been as scared as I was in that moment. This is a bit of a different take on creepy. When I was about 12, I accidentally went off pissed. I don't know what that means. On a ski run and got a bit lost. I found myself on a flat expanse. I skied in the direction of a massive board that I assumed was a sign, offering directions. But the lettering was on the other side. When I got around to face it, it was a danger sign, warning people not to go near the lake due to thin ice. This is Australia. It's not cold enough to produce reliable ice. I realized I could have simply disappeared and perhaps no one would have ever found out what happened to me. Being a kid, witnessing my dad going through alcohol withdrawal, he would hold long conversations by himself as if he was talking to someone on the phone, and he would see things that weren't there. He then took my bike for a ride and fell over and had a seizure. I was too scared to do anything, but someone came to help, and he went to the hospital for a week. Went to bed in a hotel room with the balcony door open because it was hot. Had a bad dream of a guy in a red checkered shirt peering into my room, entering and eating an ice cream at the end of my bed. When I woke up, I discovered a half-melted banana-colored ice cream between the bed and the wall. Oh, hell no! Not a spooky ghost story, but the creepiest thing I've ever seen 
scene was working my college job. I look a lot younger than my age in general. A 50-year-old man was intently set on talking to me and getting up real close to me while he did so. That alone made me incredibly uncomfortable. Then he asks, by the way, how old are you? When I said 24, he looked at me with an absolutely disgusted look on his face and said, oh, I thought you were way younger than that. To this day, I'm creeped out by that single comment. That's disgusting. <laughs> oh my God, that's um awful. I, I got nothing to say about that. That's just like, ew. We need less old people <laughs> that do that kind of shit. That's disgusting. How hard is it to not be a creep? Was staying at my sister's when I was 14 and had a horrible nightmare about being strangled by the devil. I can only see his face smiling at me and feel a crushing sensation on my throat. I told him to f*** off and swung a punch and then I woke up. I looked over and it was about 1 a.m. The, the next morning, my sister was complaining that she had a really horrible nightmare that the devil was strangling her. I asked her what time this happened and she said, around 1 o'clock. I took my nephew to this park, semi-surrounded by woods. While pushing him on the swings, I heard rustling and turned around to see a man in a ski mask watching us. 10 out of 10, we'll never go back. I once worked as a server in a strip club. One member would pay me 20 plus dollars to make an origami frog, then step on it. I thought at first it was just weird, but then I learned about the crush fetish. What is cool in the eyes of most high schoolers, but is actually cringe. Most high schoolers. Being popular for the wrong reasons. As soon as you graduate, that starts over. Better not to rely on being popular and prepare. Telling people how mature you are. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're so mature. Discussing sex loudly with the purpose of having random strangers hear it as if that somehow is a sign of maturity. I'll tell you, it's not. Being rude to teachers. Every person who I know who was rebellious in school cringes hard when they think about the they said to teachers. I was never really a rebellious kid who was mean to teachers. The only exception was this one uh, substitute teacher we had where she was very disrespectful to us as a class and I was just the one who was like, I'm not taking this. So I was very mean to her and I got sent to the office. Uh, and all of my regular teachers I really respect though, but she deserved it. Moaning in the middle of the class. It's just a prank, bro. No, you're being an asshole. Adults who hang out with them. Hickeys or so I've been told. I actually have no issue with them just as long as they're hidden. When women smile at you in public, what are you supposed to do? Immediately ball up like a threatened armadillo. Attempt to roll away. I love you. Look behind you in a confused manner. Explode into a thousand bats and fly off into the moonlit sky. That's my reaction whenever a woman looks at me. Smile, nod, keep walking. Clam up, post about it on Reddit. Run to the land of the ice and snow. Turn around because there's a high chance that she's smiling at the person behind me. Wake up. You're running late for work. Wave your arms above your head to appear as large as possible and yell as loudly as you can. Chances are she'll scamper back into the forest. Honestly, this whole situation can be avoided by tying some bells to your belt so women can hear you coming and avoid you in advance. Stay safe out there. Do a backflip. If you can't, they'll know you're not worth their time. Smile back. Great Mac Miller song. What is a great example of a necessary evil? The ability for the human body to feel pain. As exploitable as it is, without this ability to feel pain, the life expectancy would go way down because people often wouldn't realize something was wrong with their body until it was too late to do anything about it. Pain is the body's natural defense mechanism to protect itself against further injury. If you don't experience sitting down and being humbled, you're all the more likely to not only let success go to your head, but take things for granted. Farting. It stinks and it's embarrassing, but we'd be in constant agony without it. Sadness. You can't be happy all the time. It isn't healthy. You have to take the good with the bad. You learn to cope and move on from it. Corners of doorways, the toes, need to be kept in check. Yeah, if you don't stub your toe for a long time, they actually grow and become sentient. Not buying from puppy and kitten mills. If you don't buy them, they're going to have a terrible quality of life if they survive at all. But if you buy them, you're actively paying for the continuation of the breeding and putting more animals in that situation. It's a tricky situation and really tragic either way. To protect your country against war is to war. Mortality. Imagine what would happen if you took the certainty of death off the table. It would be absolute insanity. Zoos. I hate the idea of large animals, which would usually have large territories, tigers, rhinos, hippos, lions, confined to a small space. And I hate seeing animals with large intellectual capacities, elephants, large primates, dolphins, lacking stimulation. Unfortunately, we as humans are failing them in the wild. At least zoos with breeding programs, they're kept safe and thriving, working. Everyone hates it, but we do it because we're forced to need money. Huh, it's like we almost did an entire post about this already. What famous person do you dislike and why? Subway Jared for the depth of his selfishness and depravity. He isn't even a little bit sorry for what he did. Jake Paul, he's annoying, obnoxious, and disrespectful. Wait, I thought everybody hated him. You'd be surprised how quickly the internet forgives white men. Steven Seagal, fake bad and a habitual liar. I agree with a lot of this list, but I need to add Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy Williams. So true. Get Wendy Williams the f*** out of here. Dr. Phil, because he exploits people for money. I was neutral on Pete Davidson until that f***ing Taco Bell ad on here. Why? Taco Bell breakfast is so good. It's actually really good. Better than some most 
host of McDonald's breakfast. If McDonald's didn't have the McGriddle, Taco Bell breakfast would be better on every f***ing front. Chris Brown. Oprah. Disingenuous as hell. Same for Ellen DeGeneres. Nick Cannon. Not only is that man the host of the god-awful Mass Singer and obsessed with spreading his seed, but he's also a wild anti-Semite, and I feel like everyone just forgot about that despite it only happening like a year ago. Gwyneth Paltrow, because she's so snobby and elitist. I feel like Gwyneth Paltrow was also just really f***ing stupid. Like, actually low IQ. What life-changing item can you buy for less than $100? A good pillow. I bought a $1 back scratcher from an Asian market in town. Best $1 I've ever spent. First aid kit. They are handy when you least want them to be. A decent dash cam. I scoffed at the idea of a dash cam for years. A friend told me to try it out, and it helped me out when I got in an accident a couple years back. Blackout curtains. Condoms. A library card. Free if you live in the library's district. A fee if you are a non-resident. So many resources for self-improvement and growth. And so many free alternatives to paid services. Smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Very important. Make sure you, you have that sorted out, please. I may be just a disembodied voice reading Reddit to you in the mornings or whenever you re-watch or whenever you watch these videos, but I do care about you. Even if you disagree with my opinions. Like, so many of you were like, ew, Mason, what the hell are you talking about? Olives are good on a couple videos back. And I'm like, ew, no, what? Why do you like olives? They're disgusting. Sorry, I got off track. A fire extinguisher. What plot hole irritates you the most? Hocus Pocus. The witches are so amazed by the present day, like they see a paved road and a bus, and they're like, what the f***? What is this? Half an hour later, Bette Midler flies alongside the good guys and says, show me your license and registration. How would she know about that? Maybe not a plot hole per se, but it bugs the heck out of me when the interior of a residence doesn't match with the exterior. Completely not the post, but whatever. Why didn't the Little Mermaid just communicate via writing? She could sign her name to the contract, so obviously she could read and write. In kids' movies, where Santa is real, but nobody knows except the kids, the parents wake up to presents under the Christmas tree every year and are like, yep, nothing sus here. Toy Story 2. If Woody is an old family toy, which makes sense because he was apparently made in the 50s, then why does he not seem to have any memory of being owned by anyone but Andy? I wouldn't mind as much if it wasn't hugely central to the entire plot of the movie that he's afraid of Andy outgrowing him. One Harry Potter plot hole that has bothered me since I was a kid is how did Fred and George get the passphrase to the Marauder's Map? I solemnly swear that I am up to no good is very specific. Not sure if this counts as a plot hole, but Home Alone 2 really bugs me. McAllister family lives in a mansion in Chicago. Treats extended family to holiday vacations, has two parents who are attentive enough to regularly attend school functions and fairly discipline their children when they misbehave. Experience the worst case scenario from waking up late one year earlier. And you're telling me this family still only has one alarm clock in the entire house? The movie annoys me for many reasons, but in The Dark Knight Rises, the police force spend months underground, yet when they emerge, they are all cleanly shaven, their uniforms are neatly pressed, and their shirts are pristine. Aladdin. Aladdin's first wish was make me a prince, not make me look like a prince. Make me an actual prince. So the rest of the movie is his friends telling him not to act like a prince, and the bad guy is threatening to reveal that Aladdin is not a prince. I mean, the most powerful being on Earth made him a prince, so he's a prince! Why does Santa want Rudolph to guide the sleigh with his bright ass nose on a foggy night? Bright lights plus fog equals whiteout. Nose light is polarized. If Buzz Lightyear believes he's a space ranger, why does he pretend to be non-sentient along with the other toys when Andy or his mom come into the room? I always assumed it was an involuntary response in all toys. Toy Story 1. The movie is Buzz coming to terms with the fact that he is a toy, and his backstory is not actually real. Toy Story 2. The movie is Woody discovering his backstory. If every toy fresh off the shelf believes they are actually that thing and not a toy, then why does Woody not remember it all? If Buzz is aware of Zerg, then why does Woody not know Jesse, Bullseye, or Pete until meeting them? Face off. Faces are not masks. The skin covers bone and muscle to help make up the distinctive features, and even if that wasn't the case, Cage and Travolta still have their own hair, and voices, and teeth. Is it a plot hole or a contrivance? What is your most disgusting work story? I got a good one. When I was a card attendant at Target, um, I saw a couple bring in their non-service dog, and the dog took a shit on the floor in front of the check lanes, and they kept walking and did not clean it up. I was pooped, and I wanted to throw up at the same time. My first cockroach job as a pest control technician exterminator was one of the worst I've ever seen. My seasoned co-worker pointed out that when people have severe roach problems, they tend to not have any hair on their face. No eyebrows, eyelashes, etc. When I went back, I noticed not a single family member had any kind of facial hair. Even the toddler has no eyelashes. Definitely still haunts me. I bent over to pick up a tool I dropped, and a cow shat in my butt crack. Ew! Ew! Oh, gross! Oh my god! Not- uh. I worked as a corrections officer in a maximum security prison. The first week I worked there, an inmate collected and spread his poop all over the walls. It was in the air vent and everything. It is a health hazard, so we had to clean it up. Me, being the new guy, was voluntold, and I would have to do it. I had to 
to pressure wash and bleach and scrub the doo-doo. I fix equipment in convenience stores. A young lady once thought it would be hilarious to place a used feminine hygiene product into a microwave, turn it on for as long as the dial timer would allow, and then she left. The smell was indescribable. That microwave got thrown away and replaced, though I was asked if I could fix it. I work in IT for a school district. One of my first years on the job, we still had desktops in classrooms. I got a ticket that one of them wasn't working in one of our elementary schools. I went to the building and went to investigate, and a young child had projectile vomited on the monitor in front of the desktop. There was vomit in the vents and the fans inside the case. I snapped a picture of the serial number, put a trash bag over the entire thing, and hauled it into the dumpster. I worked in a <laughs> student nightclub on the bar. Saturday night shift over and club is shut, cleaning down the bar, and I'm the only female left. Half the staff have left already. Bouncer calls me over and asks me to go get this drunk girl out of the bathroom. She had her pants down, so none of the dudes wanted to go in. I went in, shouted to her, came to her stall, and she was sat on the floor with her pants and underwear down her ankles. She'd thrown up all over herself and in her underwear. I'm not saying that word because it looks like a bad word that I don't want to say. So I'm going to say underwear. I gently nudged her with my foot, told her she needs to leave, and the club has called a taxi for her. She stood up, pulled up her vomit-filled underwear, and walked out of the bathroom. That's disgusting. I'm going to vomit. Not in my underwear, though. I worked with developmentally delayed adults in daytime work program. I was filling in being one-on-one -on -one with this one client. She ate her own sh to own me. I quit. Sounds like she owned you. I'm a landscaper, was weed whacking in a backyard, my mouth was open for some reason, and turned right into a spider web. The spider went in my mouth, oh, uh -huh. and I spat it out onto the ground. Zero out of ten day for both me and the spider. I drank a live centipede in my coffee once. Very uncool, not fun at all time. Oh, uh, not bugs. I hate bugs. I hate bugs. Uh, I'm okay. Work in hospitality. I was young and new to the job at the time. I saw one of my supervisors drop a half-roasted chicken on the floor. Well, it actually clattered into a fridge and then to the floor. The pieces were everywhere and all the marinade had exited the meat. He just picked it up, looked at it to see if there was anything obviously stuck to it, and then served it. Awful. What's incorrectly perceived as a sign of low intelligence? Asking questions. How are people supposed to learn if they aren't allowed to ask and expect the correct answer? Someone with a low-level job isn't automatically unintelligent. Changing one's opinion. Stuttering or stumbling over words. Being inarticulate does not mean someone is stupid. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it can come across that way. Humility to openly admit you don't know something or enough about something is seen that way for some dumb reason. Taking a second after hearing something to respond. Broken or heavily accented English. Not answering straight away. The only answer you can get right away is a canned answer. Looks. I've known many super intelligent people who were assumed to be stupid and treated badly. Dyslexia. Going to community college. Everyone I've ever told that I started at community college has said it was super smart decision. Slow speech. Some of the smartest people I know talk very, very slowly. What's something you thought wasn't worth the money until you actually tried it? Paying for movers. Yeah, next time I'm definitely not having them do it myself. I'm, I'm paying somebody. A good shower head. Seriously, once you find the right one, it's worth every penny. Edit. Y'all are perverts. Good underwear. Not being uncomfortable in the crotch was a 5% improvement to the overall quality of my life. Worth paying twice as much. There aren't a lot of cheap purchases that you can make that will improve your overall quality of life by 5%. Owning my own tools and learning how to build and work on things myself. A good quality mattress. A good massage. A good vacuum. <laughs> Mine sucks. Shut up. That joke was made before the vacuum cleaner was made. Good shoes. An electric toothbrush. Therapy. Noise canceling headphones. I never knew how much background noise caused my body to feel tense. Sometimes I wear them with no music. No, I'm not on the spectrum. What's something you wouldn't even try once? Cave diving. Nope. Yeah, you can never catch me freaking cave diving. Oh my god. I'd scream and then die. Anything that involves me not being able to move my body. And tarantulas. Russian roulette. That cheese with the maggots. I'm sorry, what? What do you mean cheese with maggots? I'm not even Googling it. I'm not Googling it. I know, I know I always, if I don't know what something is, I'll look it up really quick, but I, I am, I am choosing to live in blissful ignorance. I am not Googling cheese with maggots because I'm gonna see bugs and I'm gonna throw up. A willy piercing. That means yes. Climbing Mount Everest. It's basically a graveyard up there. You're walking up on dead people. Bungee jumping and skydiving. Safe most of the time, but you're 100% f***ed if things go wrong. Scat play. Whoa. Respect Miss Ella and Satchmo. Skibbity bop boop 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 boop
really don't feel like getting slapped, so I'm good. But deceased musician would still be making amazing music if they were alive today. Marvin Gaye. Also real sad that his dad was responsible for taking his life. Jimi Hendrix. Freddie Mercury. Jeff Buckley. Mozart. Bob Marley. M.F. Doom. Prince. Avicii. Amy Winehouse. Aaliyah. Mac Miller. How do you know you're attractive? I attract stuff like debt or misfortunes. The IRS keeps trying to f*** me. This sexy MF in the mirror keeps telling me so. That's how. I don't think I am, but the person I care about the most thinks I am. So that's good enough for me. Because I get ads saying sexy singles are in my area. There's no one for miles. So I've concluded that I'm the sexy single. People are attracted to you. People literally make an effort to get your attention for a purpose other than selling you something. My mom told me so. If a kid says you're ugly, then you're ugly. Same goes for if they say you're beautiful or pretty or handsome. Then you probably are. They don't usually lie. That's honestly the best test. I used to get catcalled a lot. I'd hear things being yelled out at me from passing cars. Now I weigh 40 pounds more and I don't get that anymore. I didn't want to be catcalled, but I knew I was attractive. Now, not so good looking. What life hacks are actually terrible advice or dangerous? Absolutely anything posted by 5 Minute Crafts started off so innocent and now some of that is lethal. It will kill you. They've run out of ideas. Any street fight advice that isn't, it's not worth it, run away. When cutting bagels, remember to put your finger through the stabilization hole. Setting up candles and clay pots to heat your room instead of turning on the radiator. That's how a lot of fires start. There was a big thing a while back about boiling water and melting the ice on your windshield. Someone else used this hack for me and my windshield cracked into a total spider web. Using a nail file to shave the edges of your teeth to make them straighter. A better question would be what life hacks aren't terrible advice. What do men want? I'm curious to see what other men want because I know what I want. Love, money, more Pokemon plushes, more Pokemon things. I'm a simple man. Probably a lot of the same things women want. Less stress, more stability to be f to be successful in their endeavors, etc. A nap and 15 minutes to myself. A back and neck massage. Cabin in the woods, away from everybody. Loyalty, time alone, and to feel appreciated. I could die a happy man if I actually saw the impact my life had on others. Companionship and a deep emotional connection, even if they don't know how to ask for it. I personally just want to love someone and be loved back. Could do away with pretty much everything else. To find the lost city of Atlantis. Maybe also getting some soft forehead kisses too. A hug. Just a hug. Only one thing and it's fucking disgusting. Playing online without lag. I just want to go home. To step on a really crunchy leaf. Lego. A realistic and captivating pirate themed video game. I want it that way. Tell me why. Definitely not. Hot chip and lies. Edit. I will allow the hot chip because it didn't lie. People who all over toilet seats. Why? I watched a video on Twitter from an alt account of someone who lives by me filming himself f***ing all over the toilet, walls and floor in a pub. Absolute trash. You're telling me that's disgusting behavior. I have a known two guys that do this. The only thing they had in common was that they were both dumb f***s. The toilet seats killed my parents and now I seek revenge. You gotta do what you gotta do. We'll let it slide. I grew up with six brothers and never in my life have I had to clean pee off a toilet seat until I became a mom to two girls. It's almost impressive. I don't know how they do it. I used to be a caretaker in both elementary and high school for some years and the girls bathrooms were always worse than the boys. Not just piss all over the seats. I clean after myself but my splits. I want to put up a sign stop doing jumping jacks while pooping in the men's room. Hey if you can do that it's kind of impressive. When your is set on spray instead of stream. I usually like the mist setting. Always feels nice and cool in the summer. What show will you never get tired of re-watching? Whose line is it anyway? The Twilight Zone. Taskmaster. UK which shouldn't need to be said but it does. What we do in the shadows. Band of Brothers. The IT crowd for the people who are too cool to watch The Office. Black Books. Arrested Development. Specifically seasons one through three. Bob's Burgers. The Office of Animation. Downtown Abbey. South Park. Simpsons. First 10 seasons. What are the unwritten rules of Reddit? If you see someone you know, no you don't. Don't post personal information or use your actual name as your username. If you find an abandoned safe, for the love of God, make sure it's open or can be opened before posting a picture. Do not, under any circumstances, post will update soon. Please, we don't want to wait. We just want to know. Someone has to ask a question about sex, men or women, at least every day. How do I get the sex out of the men women? Can anyone explain to me what the difference between top, hot, and best posts? Top, most upvotes. Hot, been upvoted a lot recently. Best, no idea. Maybe highest upvote to downvote ratio. The meaningless details in the background of a photo should be discussed at length, despite the original idea of the poster. Example, I just finished tuning this beauty. A photo of a vintage motorcycle in a garage. Top comment. I would never store my gas like that. Tiny blurred gas can barely visible in background. You trying to burn your house down? Because that's
that's how you burn a house down. Guys, if you do this, shut the f*** up. Never tell someone in real life your username, especially if you recommended Reddit to someone. Edit after nine hours? Forgot to switch to my main before commenting. Is there a rule that you gotta mention every time you edit something? Because I keep seeing people do it. I think that's just common courtesy. Everything is apparently faked, staged, and from nine years ago. Also, you're wrong. Guys, I'm the only one who can be right in any situation ever, and if I'm not right, you're lying. If they answer your question, upvote them. If you answer their question, upvote the post. If you simply like what you see, upvote it. Everybody has got a voice here, and opinions are so different. If you are nice, someone could attack you. If you are mean, someone could attack you. Gain the confidence to not feel bad if someone doesn't like your opinion. Non-Americans, what do you think every American person has in their house? A switch that when you flick it, it turns your sink into a blender. A trash smoothie. Not every house has that. That's actually just if you want to prank your friends if they drop something down there and they think they're safe enough to grab it. Barbecue sauce. I have at least five varieties of barbecue sauce in my fridge at the moment, including two that are homemade. <laughs> I actually don't know if I have barbecue sauce right now. Maybe Worcestershire, but ugh. This is the most wholesome I've felt about my country in a while. LOL. Yes, peanut butter, air conditioner, disposal in the sink. Na -na -na. Not every house has air conditioning and that's a problem. Popcorn setting on their microwave. Yeah, I mean, I have that, but it's not like I use it because it's so unreliable. I'm so surprised with this whole top loading washing machine answer. Why is this abnormal? Cereal. Yeah, we got cereal, but no milk. This thread is really making me question if European houses are just empty boxes with a singular bag of tea in them. Drywall. Lots of drywall. As an American, I was expecting guns, but ranch dressing hurt for some reason. Large quantities of over-the-counter drugs in huge bottles. Well, you gotta stay prepared. Plastic bags. Well, I don't want to just throw them away, and sometimes I run out of dog bags for my dog, so it's, it's a nice backup. What has been the most destructive lie in human history? The lead in this gasoline is perfectly safe. Plastic is easily recyclable, so long as the public does their duty to sort it and bring it to its designated waste area. Yeah, once I found out there are different types of plastics that you can't necessarily recycle, I just kind of lost my mind. They are not us. Oxycontin isn't addictive. Oh, how I love Big Pharma. That was a joke, by the way. Sugar isn't the problem, it's fats. Let's make everything fat-free and just triple the sugar content. I have read and agree to the terms of use. Fat is the source of all evil, while sugar is just fine. Having lived in America all my life, I'm not really sure if I've tasted what real food is. Politicians are looking out for your best interests. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are. Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. If they really did, then why would they have done what they did in September? Like, come on. That there is one true religion, and everyone should convert to it. Or die. Look, I respect everyone's beliefs, but don't just shove it down my throat, you know? I'm going out for milk and cigarettes. I'll be back in an hour. Dad? Look, maybe he just doesn't know what an hour really is. I mean, American education is not great. What is something people brag about that they shouldn't? How little they sleep. Especially back when I was in school, people made it like a one-up contest of like, oh, I only got four hours of sleep. Oh, yeah? Well, I, I only got one hour of sleep, and then, then I had to do homework. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, um, I, I, I didn't sleep. I never sleep. Not taking PTO on their jobs. It's kind of sad in my opinion. Yeah, that's literally wasting free money days. Like, you, you could just have the day off and get paid. How trash they get every day slash weekend. The only time I'm impressed is if they never have a hangover. Then I'm like, how do you do it? Please tell me. People who watch gore? Why? Pure curiosity is the only answer, TBH. Morbid curiosity. Morb. Morbius? It makes me value being alive. Sounds deep, but when all you have is intrusive thoughts about death, seeing it almost grounds you, at least for a little while anyway. Saw it way too young on Rotten.com and SteakandCheese.com. Now I gotta scratch the itch. No, you don't. You do not need to scratch that itch. TBH, I just like grossing myself out and seeing how much I can watch before getting sick. Alright, weirdo. It's a weird cycle of wondering if I'm a horrible person, seeking it, finding it, being grossed out, and confirming that I am not sick. Then it repeats. I had tumultuous childhood of traumatic bullying, which led to a gore-filled imagination, and I lost my parents when I was young, but I think I've recovered from the past trauma. I'm sorry, gore-filled imagination? Uh, do you mind elaborating? To strengthen my stomach. Ah, uh, there's better ways to do that. You get to see the parts of the human body without having to look through a whole entire anatomy. Fast learning from my perspective. When did the hurt begin? What mythical creature slash cryptid has the most evidence of actually existing? Could swear I saw a jackalope the other day in SoCal. I didn't know those were like cryptids. I thought those were just
just an animal. Giant squids used to have a somewhat mythical status, so anything deep sea based? Considering we haven't been able to explore the entirety of our ocean, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're down there. People have observed coyotes walking upright on their hind legs. It isn't understood why, possibly a response to feeling threatened. Coyote is one of the most common and important figures in indigenous mythologies of Western North America, where he frequently appears as a transformer and or trickster deity. Can we do went from is to was in human history? If so, I'm going the bunyip of Australia. Several traditional descriptions of it basically describe a species species of giant wombat that coexisted with the Aborigines for a while. The length of their cultural memory is incredible. Jackalope, because there are some rabbits that have a disease that causes horn-like growths on their head. My granddad from Malta swears he has seen a giant squid with his own eyes. When he was younger living in Malta, he went swimming with his brother in the ocean, and as he dunked below the water at sunset, he saw an eye as big as a dinner plate staring back at him. He said it was the most frightened he has ever been in his life. His brother saw it as well. If I saw that in real life, I probably would have inked myself, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I would have pooped my pants and... What is the most overrated artist slash band in your opinion? I'm surprised people didn't say DJ Khaled, but him for me. Is he even an artist? Like, is he a producer? I don't know what he does. Did someone say DJ Khaled? Yeah, DJ Khaled. Drake. He's just a little fruity. Give him a break. Maroon 5. Yeah, I can't see Levine coming back from those DMs. That that band with Jared Leto, and Jared Leto. I'm sorry, there's a band that Jared Leto was in? Machine Gun Kelly. I'm glad I haven't heard about him in a good while, uh, but Jesus, man. Kiss. Still off the top of my head, I cannot name a single Kiss song. Pablo Picasso. His paintings just look weird to me. Well, art is open to interpretation, but I think he was also a guy, so yeah, fair enough. Drake. OMFG. I never understood why anyone actually likes his music. Literally every single song I've heard from him other than forever is complete I'm assuming you mean music, so Beyonce. Not that she's a bad singer by any means, but a lot of her songs are repetitive in a could you maybe have added an extra verse or two to mix it up way? Like instead of singing if you liked it you should have put a wrong on it 18 times in a row, come up with just a rhyme or two? Ooh, you almost had a point there, but you typoed so Queen B reigns. Olivia Rodrigo has like the most boring songs ever. I really don't understand understand. Yeah, she clearly has talent, but the music she made isn't groundbreaking or unique. Justin Bieber. The media loves him, but most people in my family hate him. Is this entire comment thread stuck in 2011? Ed Sheeran. I've seen a lot of acts like his in my time. Some of them have been absolutely incredible. Sadly, many never get signed, and even more just stop performing altogether. Ed got lucky. That's all. What scares the living shit out of you? Becoming schizophrenic or getting dementia slash Alzheimer's? No longer being able to trust my POV, or even worse, not knowing that I can't trust it. Let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. You see, now that's the reason I dropped out of college. <laughs> when a big bug you're observing opens its shell to reveal wings. Fucking run. Yeah, it's definitely on a danger course straight to your eyes, so get out of there. Deep Ocean. We haven't explored a vast chunk of it, and still have managed to find scary as hell fish. As fascinated as I am by the ocean, <laughs> you won't catch me going near it. I'm I'm gonna die one day, but this Reddit comment won't. Well, unless we have nuclear fallout, then the internet's gone. Making people uncomfortable or coming off as rude or creepy. I go as far as actively avoiding social interaction with people because of this. It's not good and I'm trying to work on it, but honestly, I don't know how to actually fix it. You and me both, sister. <laughs> I wish I knew. We need to talk. That's one sentence that'll just instantly give you anxiety because you don't know what it's gonna be about. Could be bad, could be good. You never know. Oh, flying cockroach. Ugh, God, oh, no, I don't like that. Knowing that this is all temporary. I mean, there's two ways to look at that, because if everything's temporary, then everything is fine. Nothing matters, so just live your life. World, what does you off about Canada? For me personally, they're hoarding all the poutine, and I'm very hungry. 50% of the name is the letter A, and that just isn't fair to the other letters. Edit, I've heard the C-A-N-A -A joke like five times now. Dear Canada. Canada. Please come get your damn geese. Love, America. Expensive.
expensive mobile plans. Are they that much worse in Canada? I mean, I'm already paying too much. Their beady little eyes and their flapping heads so full of lies. My state's been trying to give Canada a high five for years, and they just leave us hanging. This post is dominated by Canadians complaining about Canada more than it is the people around the world. Look for the answer saying Toronto, and you found a Canadian. Pepper spray, for self-defense purposes, is illegal. I will never get over that. WTF? It does sound weird, but at the same time, pepper spray is really evil. Their poutine recipes are making me fat. You can't just eat a little poutine. That is delicious. F*** you and your amazingly delicious fries for making me this way. Signed your neighbor to the south. See, this guy gets it, and it's so dangerous because it's so good. It's location. Why's it gotta be that far away from me? All those hosers. Cultural genocide of its indigenous peoples. It's honestly a little insulting that media doesn't cover this. Like, American media isn't showing it. I've only seen it barely on Twitter. What profession has the worst people working at a scam call center? You have to be a certain type of asshole to work at one of those places. Televangelist. MLM without a physical product. It really is the perfect scam. Payday loan owners and employees. Scum of the earth preying on the needy. Paparazzi. I still never understood the job of paparazzi other than just harass celebrities. Surgeons. Egomaniac assholes. I'm an MD. When therapists or social workers are good, they're great. When they're shit, it's beyond fucking terrible. In my experience with therapists, it seems to be a mixed bag of people who genuinely want to help people and complete sociopathic narcissists who want to demean and control. Also musicians. Conclusion? People are the worst. Yeah, that really does sum it up. Gamers, what video game hit you the hardest? I had Pac-Man Arcade Machine fall on me once. That one hit pretty hard. Red Dead Redemption 2. A video game has never got me in the feelers like that one did. I was not ready for what Mass Effect did to me. Titanfall 2. I didn't really like the multiplayer mode, but the story was amazing. The relationship with BT and Jack Cooper was beautiful, and the ending made me cry. To the moon. Yes, 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 100 times yes. This game, it ruined me. It's so cute. Please go play it. Has to be either Halo Reach or Titanfall 2. Unfortunately, I was not a Microsoft kid, so I never really got to experience Halo the way other people did, so oops. What is something illegal that you do frequently? I wondered how police were working from home. Police furiously screen capping. Come on, y'all, you're just telling on yourselves. I downloaded a car. <gasps> you wouldn't. Feed random meters downtown that are expired. I also like to play Meter Fairy. I don't understand why that's illegal. You're just being a nice person. Pirate TV shows and movies. I don't know why it's illegal, but I've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, Hook, and a few others. Watch anime slash movies slash TV shows on illegal sites. I recently started acquiring toilet paper from work. A weekly bonus, if you will. Nice try, FBI. You will never get my secrets. What's the most frequently recurring theme in your dreams? Running away slash trying to hide from someone or something. It's pretty much the only type of dream I've had since childhood. My teeth falling out. I've never had one of those dreams personally, but that does sound horrifying. I gotta get to the math class that I never attended all semester for some oversight and the final exam is today and because I never attended the class I'm not sure where the rooms is and I'm trying to go faster but it's like the faster I run the slower I go also the same thing but with planes inability to use my cell phone despite it being in my hand powered up and interactive it's incredibly frustrating and I don't remember it ever happening to me IRL I lived in my childhood home from birth until high school was over every time I have a dream when I'm at home it's always my childhood home never at any home I lived after. I'm 29 now. I always dream that I'm on a ship or a boat with people I know or I don't know, but it's always about finding some exit, and I relate these dreams to my jail time. Seven skinny cows eating seven healthy cows. Yeah, I had truthfully no idea what that's supposed to mean. What's the game you've put a thousand hours into? I mean, off the top of my head, probably Minecraft, but that's mostly just from leaving it open for hours, so I don't know. Civ, just one more turn. No, 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 that's the trap. You play one more turn and then you have to play six more because then you can get your new research finished and you're, oh god, you'll never finish. Minecraft. I feel like that would be majority of people. Old school RuneScape, Destiny 2, Overwatch, Elder Scrolls Online. Are MMORPGs technically cheating? Because sometimes there are like time limit quests, so I don't know. The Sims. <laughs> RuneScape. Rocket League. Personally, I don't think I could ever spend that much time in that game because god, I can't drive. Solitaire. Ah, 
Ah, you're going with the classics, I see. Easily more than a thousand plus hours. League of Legends. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Do you want to talk about it? Red Dead Redemption 2. While I haven't played it, the world is really nice to look at, so I can imagine myself getting lost walking around. What's the best insult you know that has no swearing? Best one I've seen was in an old Reddit thread. You have the social skills of a wasp at a picnic. Ooh, ow. I can only explain it to you. I can't understand it for you. I don't get it. I take it you weren't burdened with an overabundance of schooling. Stolen from Firefly. My favorite from Shakespeare. I would challenge you to a battle of wits, but I see you are unarmed. I envy people who have never met you. Or, I'm surprised natural selection hasn't poached people like you out of existence yet. I don't have the time or the crayons to explain this to you. If you were half as smart as you thought you were, you'd be smarter than I think you are. Sharp as a marble, that one is. You have a face for radio. Yeah, I've been told that a couple times. <laughs> Thank you for your input. Then change the subject. What's the most useful psychological trick you know of? Stare at a crying toddler in public until the toddler sees you, and they immediately stop crying most of the time. The five-minute trial, when you're having trouble getting started on things. Tell yourself that you'll try cleaning or whatever you're putting off for five minutes, and if you still don't feel like doing after that, you're off the hook. Usually once I start, I can power through, though. Huh, I never actually thought to try that, but that does sound helpful. Learn to be a good listener and always ask questions. Most people only like hearing themselves talk. Listening more than you speak will always give you the upper hand, and when you ask people questions, they think you are interested in what they're saying. You can get far in life by listening to what people have to say without saying much about yourself. When you are about to cry in public, in front of someone you don't want to cry in front of, start doing math in your head. It focuses your brain on the math and not the emotions of the situation. Mm, no, that'll just make me start crying because I'll think of a math problem I can't solve and then I'll just start getting sad. Jump around and exclaim positive affirmations like a Baptist preacher. It can help motivate you and get you energized. Oh, I want to eat some cookies, but I resisted. I resisted the devilish call of those Oreos, those chips ahoys, those Keebler elves. I basked in the warmth and light of nature's candy. Fruit! This is effing hilarious and I'm going to start doing it, if even just for the lols it provides. I've learned teaching at a Taekwondo in a studio with little kids that kids don't like to be told no. So, instead of asking if a kid wants to do their form, for example, I'd ask them if they wanted me or someone else to count their form for them, giving them the illusion of choice and saves me a crying five-year-old kicking my shins. What are the advantages of being ugly? Nobody bothers you. Let me ask my brother. Ooh, didn't have to do him like that. You can drink in peace at the bar. That's a little sad when you think about it. When someone is nice to you, you're sure they are for real nice. Your picks aren't used to catfish slash scam others. A little strange, but a win is a win. You can concentrate on your career. Right. Unless you're ugly and stupid. Like me. If a woman acts interested in you romantically, you know for sure that it is because of your money. Not gonna lie, they had us in the first half. Gif. Yeah, not the direction I thought you were going with that. I ain't giving away my secrets. If you are a heavy introvert, being left the f*** alone. People generally tend to bother you less often. If someone loves you, they really do love you. What's an annoying thing that people base their entire personalities around? Being rude to people for being excited about their hobbies. Horoscopes and what their sign is. Ugh, that's such a Capricorn thing to say. I'm not an asshole. I'm just more honest than other people, and they can't handle that. Yeah, no, you're just a mean person. Their dependence on coffee. Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. And I'm all out of coffee, so never speak to me. Being a stoner. It's more so the culture around it that really just, ugh, just puts me off. CrossFit. In our Lord's year of 2022, I still do not know what CrossFit is. Knowing everything about celebrities. It's rubbish. There are definitely better ways to spend your time. Driving a Tesla. Driving a Tesla isn't inherently bad, but if you're an Elon apologist, then, uh, yeah. Jeep people are weird. Like, really weird. They're banging their cars, for sure. What movie is good, but not rewatchable? Marley and Me. Still haven't seen it, and no, you can't make me. I worked at Blockbuster when the 2003 04-ish movie Crash came out. Whenever anyone wanted my opinion, I said, it's a really good movie. I never want to see it again. And never have. Schindler's List. I think there is some inherent value to rewatching it. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Very good, just incredibly sad. A Beautiful Mind. Good performance, but I never want to watch it again. Edit, clarification, million dollar baby. Probably the best movie I never want to see again. Hereditary. It's not just that it 
it's scary? It's because it's so oppressive. The dread and the heartbreak is too much. However, I might be able to watch it with a group of first-time viewers just to see their reactions. The Sixth Sense. It doesn't hit the same emotional chords when you know what the twist is. I still haven't watched it because I know what the twist is. A bunch of movies spoiled it for years. What's something people say that you hate? When I lived in South Carolina, everyone kept saying, no good deed goes unpunished, and it always annoyed me. Everything happens for a reason. Yes. Physics. Pacific. When trying to say specific. Triggered. This. Snowflake. Let that sink in. Unprecedented times. So many more. This. Slammed. Unprecedented. Drawing. I can see that being a little annoying. But he's young. Like, I don't give a f He poured water all over my new Nintendo 3DS. I hate the term, just some food for thought. No idea why. It just makes me so mad. What fan base is really toxic? Honestly, Redditors. It's a bad place for your mental if you forget that it's a minority. K-pop. My theory is that idols can't have GFs because the fans would actually go so far they would harass the girls or even physically hurt them or kill them. But they are toxic overall. They are so obsessed like wearing a blindfold. If you say you think those babyface puppets are ugly or not hot, they could scream so loud your ears start to bleed and rip off your face. It's crazy. Only fans TikTok. Is that like a fandom? Kanye West. He is showing signs of mental illness and decline and the fans think what he is doing is normal. It's really annoying watching people just try and wipe off his anti-Semitism by just saying, oh, but he makes such good music though. The Bible. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that book club. They're just, they get a little intense for me. QAnon. My theory is that QAnon is just an ARG that somehow older people manage to decipher and they just believe it. Toxic Avengers fans. For f**k's sake, they're insufferable. Taylor Swift. They're bullies and she doesn't do anything to stop them. I agree, but at the same time, I don't know what she can necessarily do other than say, hey, don't be mean. F**king Dave. Who is Dave? Am I out of the loop? Using only food? Where are you from? Maple syrup. Canada. Bitterballin. Oh god, I think I know where that's from, but I, it's not a, it's not clicking with me. Poutine. Oh, I guess we're back in Canada. I'ma keep this short. Extreme amounts of sugar. America. Pizza. Fellow Italian. Tiramisu. Oh no, I think the first person was saying New York. Fish and chips. UK? Flag sound. <laughs> I can't. Haggis. Scotland. Black pudding. Oh, that's another UK thing, and oh god, I just, that's not even pudding, it's meat. Oh. Swedish meatballs. Ikea. That is the only place you can get them. Fairy bread. Australia or New Zealand. Again, with these made up countries, what are people talking about? Steak Gatsby. South Africa? Pavlova. Australia or New Zealand. No matter how many fake words you come up with, I'm not going to believe you. Corned beef. Is that Ireland, maybe? Vegemite. Listen, I'm just saying, I've never seen a bottle for myself, so it doesn't exist. What's the best thing you've watched on Netflix? For me, I think it's probably Maniac, the series with Jonah Hill and Emma Stone. It's just got such a cool aesthetic. Black Mirror. Definitely a good pick. It's got a lot of variety to it. Peaky Blinders. I've heard it's pretty good. I just haven't given it a shot. Breaking Bad. The original Netflix binge fest and still so good. Probably one of the better gets that Netflix grabbed. Can't believe I haven't seen anyone mention Maniac. Fantastic miniseries. Now this guy, he knows what he's talking about. Bojack Horseman is incredible. One of these days I'll get to it. Breaking Bad. I wonder how many people's first experience of Breaking Bad was only on Netflix and not through cable TV. Stranger Things, Sex Education, Dark, Orange is the New Black, Breaking Bad, and Better Call Saul. Maniac with Emma Stone and Jonah Hill. All right, so people do have taste here. Bojack Horseman. Heartbreak High is pretty good. The representation is almost perfect. The layout for the episodes is really good. What is the best response to a middle finger? Wave to them. Guaranteed to piss them off even more. Lean forward and bite it. No reaction. Because they are likely angry and want attention. Ignore them. Look as if they were transparent and move on. They are looking for a reaction and the best thing to do is not to give them one. Giving them a thumbs down. Two middle fingers. A second finger really just adds to the damage multiplier. Is that your age or your IQ? This one only works if you're like face to face with them. Pulling my dick out. Ah, that's a scary one if you're in public. What is the funniest scene ever in a movie that wasn't a comedy? In The Wicker Man when Nick Cage is in a bear suit and he beats up an older lady. <laughs> 
the image of that is so funny. In Titanic, when the passenger falls off the stern and smacks into the propeller on the way down, the sound effect was hilarious. Just how violently he spins after hitting, too, is, I don't know, it's something about it. It has comedy elements, but not a comedy, so I think it counts. The scene in Django where the clan can't see through their hoods. Definitely a 10 out of 10 scene. In Pulp Fiction, where Vincent accidentally shoots Marvin in the face. Every time I watch it, I watch where his finger is, and that's not how you hold a gun. Blair Witch Project, when they find Josh's tongue. Solely because when I originally saw it at the cinema, somebody called out, It's Josh's penis! And from that point on, it's all I can think of in that scene. Friday the 13th Part 7, The Sleeping Bag Kill. Me and a buddy of mine died laughing in the theater. It was packed that night and everyone else was screaming. Good times! In Jurassic Park, when the bathroom walls collapse and the lawyer is just sitting there on the shitter and then gets violently eaten by the T-Rex. I think they wrote that to be a little comedic. What's your light in the dark? My cat. I'm definitely not a cat person, but uh, he, they, there is something about him. The Legend of Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom. Oh yeah, it's definitely something that kind of keeps me going because I need to see what happens. Music. A flashlight. Okay, smart guy. Steak. I f***ing love steak. R slash contagious laughter. It's very strange the way that some people's laughs are just so infectious. I take a look at my enormous I know what you're referencing. Smelling my own farts. All right, I, I, whatever works for you, I guess. What made you cry recently? Money. The lack of it, that is. Remembering my childhood dogs who passed away this year. I got them when I was 12. One passed in February and the other in July, and it still hurts. I'm deeply sorry for your loss. I, I know I will be in shambles when mine passes. Life. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> recently moved on my own, and I'm learning to cook. I hate cutting onions because instantly my eyes tear up and it lasts for like 10 minutes. That one's a technicality, but yeah, that did make you cry. I stubbed my toe. Okay, but how hard? His theme. Whose who's theme? My tear ducts. Okay, smarty pants. What? Get this guy out of here. My bank account. Oh, see, that's the trick. You just don't look at it, and if you go negative, you'll never know. Nothing. I am incapable of showing emotions. You and me both, brother. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Whoa. Pure exhaustion. I never really thought about it before, but yeah, I can see that making you break down. Well, I'm gonna go squish my dog's face for a while to cheer myself up, so I'll see you guys in another one. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brandon, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!